Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing my October budget together. I am super excited. Um, so I have my planner here as well as my actual budget sheet. I do do these in a spreadsheet first and then I just find it's easier to share with you guys on paper and it feels a little bit more official whereas in my spreadsheet I kind of tinker around with numbers constantly. So let's go ahead and dive in. The planner that I use is the Golden Coil Planner. Um, I really like this brand. I've been using it for a few years. I use it for my like everyday life planner um, and I just have a second monthly spread where I have one for my personal life and one for my financial life. So I have already filled this out. Um, I'm not really a sticker kind of planner gal, but I do have everything here and I like to assign kind of a color. So for October, being that it's the month of Halloween, of course I chose orange. So um, looking here, there's really nothing um, too crazy as far as my bills. All my bills are indicated by the purple color. I have any sort of investment like my Roth IRA and my Betterment account in orange. Any sort of income is going to be in green. So I've got interest income from my high yield savings account that I do track. Um, I've got, let's see here, cash back, paydays. Um, so I'm paid on the 15th and the last day of the month. However, I'm a month ahead. So these two checks from October are actually going to be the income that I use for November. So same thing applies. The money that I'm using for my October budget are the two paychecks that I earned in September. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a um, couple of other things. I'm going to be in Vegas on the 1st. So that's kind of fun and exciting. Um, I'll be there a couple of days before, of course, but um, since it is October, I need to count for here. And I'm also going to be in Arizona for a few days at the end of the month, which I'm also really looking forward to. So I do like to notate those just because I will be using my vacation sinking fund and um, my spending patterns will be a little bit different. You'll also notice some yellow. So I give myself a spending allowance and a grocery allowance. Um, so I have these each Friday and Monday because that's when I typically spend money is spending money I spend more on the weekend like going out to eat for drinks things like that and I go grocery shopping earlier in the week so I get my money on Monday but otherwise pretty standard I would say so let's go ahead and look at the actual budget okay so this is the um, worksheet that I use I just draw it out on my paper of course Okay, so we're going to be doing this first column, the budgeted column, together today. I do a closeout or a wrap-up recap video um, after the month is over where I go through the actuals and percentages. So I'll link my most recent one up above if you want to check it out and get an idea of what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and start. So my income I'm going to budget off of is just my salary. Um, I do typically get more money throughout the month, but... I only like to budget off of my actual like take home salary because I know that's what I absolutely can count on. So that's going to be $4,359 and 54 cents. Um, this just adjusted because my company was going through like annual enrollment for our insurance and I don't know, we got different benefits. So, um, Anyway, that should be what it is for the rest of the year and going into early next year as well. So that feels nice to kind of have a number that I can plan for. So next I have my expenses. So these are kind of my fixed expenses, if you will, the things that things don't change very often. So I do have a mortgage, which is $1,011.86. I do have an association um, associated to my home because I live in a townhouse. Um, and so... This helps pay for like the common grounds, my trash, recycling, internet cable, lawn care, snow removal, all that good stuff is in here. So I'm very pleased with that. Next, I've got insurance, and this is actually three different types of insurance all in one. Um, so I have my car insurance, my homeowner's insurance, and I also have an umbrella policy. So the three of those totals $185.20 every month. Okay, for utilities, this month it's going to be $143.52. If you are new here, what I do is I have a fund of $300 in it. I let my utilities um, auto draft out of there so they're all synced up so that they just take the payment out um, on those due dates. And then what I do for October is I look at how much came out in September so I know how much to replenish it by. It makes it so much easier because I don't have my bills 
for all of my like actual what to expect to come out in October by the time I'm doing my budget. So just, I don't know, it seemed to work for me. I know I've had a lot of people tell me that they've tried it and they're liking it. So I'm glad that it's been helping some of you guys too. Phone 8451. Um, I have a phone through Verizon. Um, and I'm really happy with my plan. I live in rural northern Minnesota. So um, internet in like public places is not always available. So I use a lot of data. So I'm very happy with my unlimited plan. Okay, subscriptions. We have four subscriptions right now that totals $54.74. I would not be surprised if we add in Disney Plus. Um, what I'm thinking I might do is substitute like Amazon Prime for Disney Plus, like kind of swap them out. Um, we'll see. Uh, just with the holidays coming up, I want to be able to have, you know, like Hocus Pocus and a few other movies and um, my boyfriend and I are just like kind of getting stuck with the subscription services that we have. So we'll probably add in Disney Plus for a few months this winter and then probably get rid of it and, you know, start it back up next winter or something like that. Okay, groceries. Um, this month I'm going to do $450. Being that we're going to be out of town for part of it and um, just that there's four Mondays in October. I'm going to go with $450. I was going to do $400, but I think I'm going to do $450. The price of groceries where I live has completely skyrocketed. It is ridiculous how much things cost, and especially the serving sizes and, like, cost per ounce is just crazy right now. So um, I'm going to go with $450 and see how we do. <clears throat> Next, I have gas. I've been doing $60 a month. Um, and that's been working out really well for me. Most months I don't even need the full 60, but, um, if I'm like going down to the city or like driving further than my normal, you know, three mile radius, <laughs> then I will need a little bit more than that. So we're going to stick there because that's been working and then spending, I get $500 a month for spending. Um, this is for everything from eating out to like a coffee to, um, I don't know, buying anything like for myself, like clothes and stuff like that. So it's really a catch all. I could have different categories, but I just honestly don't want to track it that way. Um, so that is going to be that. So this total of the expense section is 27, 29 and 35 cents. So I do like to color coordinate. So expenses to me are purple. <clears throat> And I have $1,630.19 remaining. And I like to indicate my money that's still outstanding in green. I am a zero-based budgeter, so all of this money has to go into a category somewhere. Next category is funds. Um, this is the same as like sinking funds and cash envelopes that I see a lot of other people do. I am a cashless budgeter. I just don't use cash in my everyday life. I don't like it. Um, and so I keep track of this section all in one instead of two different sections, which I know sometimes you see. So going through these annual, um, 120, this is for things that I pay once a year, like my car registration. It'll help me if I owe taxes on anything. Um, it's kind of like a catch all for those one time a year expenses. So 120 there. Miko is my cat. He gets $40 a month for his supplies, food and litter, and then, that builds on itself and it pays for his annual vet visit. <clears throat> Incidental is 50. This is my cushion fund, so it helps supplement any sort of category that may go over or if I have any bills that go over um, and just to help with anything that just comes up. It happens. I've been budgeting for long enough to know what happens. So again, if I use it, great. If I don't use it, it builds on itself in my checking account. Okay, vacation is getting $400. Now I already do have a decent sized vacation sinking fund built up and I'm going to keep adding to it. Like you guys saw on my calendar, I am going um, on a couple of trips and I've got another trip booked for November. So I need to keep funding that one. Beauty gets $50 a month. This pays for all of my like beauty, toiletry, makeup, skincare, hair care type products. Gifts is going to get $100 this month. I will be ramping this up in November and December to help cover the holidays. But I used to have like a Christmas fund and a birthday fund and all these other things. And just consolidating down to gifts has been really nice for me. It pays for all of the different gifts I'm going to give throughout the year. 
Opportunity is getting $20. Um, this is a newer fund to me. I do have um, an initial savings goal that I have built up in here. And now going forward is just kind of a little bit extra. So this is an opportunity for me to say yes or something that I normally wouldn't do um, if I have the opportunity to participate. Like over um, Labor Day weekend, we went to a raffle for like a fundraiser. So I could use this $20 to like buy raffle tickets if I wanted or, you know, whatever kind of participation I wanted to have. Um, so I'm looking forward to having this kind of slowly build, but I'm going to keep it at 20 for a while while I work on other financial goals. Home gets $50. Again, this helps with, um, you know, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, candles, whatever for the home. And then my emergency fund, I am committing to putting at least $100 in, um, hopefully more, but I do have some other priorities, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this section equals $930, which means I have a remaining of $700.19. So let's pause and highlight here and here. Moving right along next, we've got investing. So I don't currently contribute to ground floor. But I do have money in there and it earns interest and then um, whatever money I get paid back, I do just kind of keep recontributing there, but I'm not budgeting for anything. So I like to have a line just so I can report out in my actuals if I make anything there. But Betterment, I do put $25 in. This is a taxable investing account. Um, I, it's just for something big in the future. I don't really know what that means yet, but I know that I'll be happy that I'm kind of saving for something. Roth IRA is getting $100 um, this month. I also have a 401k, so this isn't the only retirement. Um, and then one of my big priorities is this HSA. So I have a health savings account um, because I qualify for a high deductible health plan for my insurance, my health insurance. Um, and there is a maximum limit of $3,600 of what you can actually put in this account. And as soon as, you know, the next tax year hits, you can't go back and backwards contribute. So I'm trying to make sure I'm maxing out each year. Um, and I have this whole thing with my company. And so I have to, I have like a difference I have to make up and it has to be from post-tax dollars, which will be fine because you fill out this form when you file your taxes and you get the credit back. So it'll all be fine. But um, this month I'm putting in $246.19. Um, and I'll talk about this and again in a second after I show you what's below here. Um, but this total is 371.19, which gives me a remaining of 329. <clears throat> okay, and then my last section I have here is my cash flow. I don't cash flow every single month, but I like to have this option here. So I can report anything and I am going to be cash flowing, setting up my living trust. I found a kind of group bundle plan with LegalZoom, which is where I'm going to start. And this is how much it costs. Supposedly, we'll see if there's taxes and stuff on that. Um, but I'm going to start there and then I can um, go to our like family lawyer and have them review the documents and all that. But this is where I'm going to start. So um, total is 329 means I've got zero remaining. Okay, so all in all, the um, priorities I have here at the bottom written down versus cash flowing this trust, so I want to make sure I can cash flow this. Then any extra money is going to go to the HSA, and if I can finish this, it's only have to put in 30890 to max it. Um, any money after that would go to my emergency fund. So that's kind of like the order of prioritization I have right now. Um, but I do think I can get this HSA done. Um, the difference between what I need and what I'm budgeting is like 60 some dollars. So I'm really hoping that I can find that um, in other areas of my budget. Like if my, you know, groceries are lower or I can make more throughout the month to put towards that. So that'd be cool. Um, and yeah, that is going to be it for my October budget. I'd love to hear from you guys if you have anything exciting coming on October that you are going to be planning for. But uh, for me, that's going to be it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.